Today, medicinal cannabis products can, for the first time, be legally prescribed to some patients across the country. They can only be given out by specialist doctors in a limited number of circumstances where other medicines have failed. The decision to relax the rules on the treatments has come after two boys, Billy Caldwell and Alfie Dingley, who both have severe epilepsy, were denied access to cannabis oil. We've been following their story for months and spoke to Alfie Dingley's mum, Hannah, back in March. So I'm just a mother who is tired of seeing my son suffer and I've found something that helps him and I want everyone to get together and make this happen for him. It's his human right to be well and this makes him well and I understand there's legal sides and there's legislation and there's red tape, I get that, but we need to act quickly and I want some sincere, um, I want some sincere, you know, uh, in, uh, some sincere help from the yeah. Home Office yeah. that they, yeah, some commitment, sorry, yeah, that they will make this happen and this is what they've offered us and I want it to happen quickly. <laughs> Well, we can talk to Rachel Rankmore now, who's in Cardiff with her 16-year-old son, Bailey, who has severe epilepsy. Also with us, Philippa Kay, who is a GP working in northwest London, and Professor Hannah Cock, who is a consultant neurologist at St George's Hospital in London. Thank you all very much for talking to us. Um, Rachel, how do you respond to today's news? Um, it should be a day of elation for us, really, that Bailey could get the medication that he, he needs to control his seizures. But for what I read in some guidelines last night from uh, the health uh, uh, board is that they will be issuing Epidiolex um, for treatment for Lennox Gasto and Dravid syndrome. Right. And what, and what would be... Why is Epidiolex not right for, for Bailey? Well, Bailey's been on CBD oil for three years. Um, we've seen positive effects with that, um, so we need him now to have full extract cannabis oil to have the full entourage effect to give him seizure control, um, and that's all Epidiolax is, is CBD oil. Okay, so it's not going to really help that much at all? No, no, okay. not at all. Let me bring in Hannah then, if I may. H Hannah, what do you make Hi. of this news? So I, I welcome the news and I, I have a great deal of sympathy for families who, you know, I appreciate what a desperate situation it is. However, I think that the red legislation and the guidance that's come through is appropriately restrictive given the evidence we have at the moment. We know that um, cannabidiol does have some effectiveness in these very severe childhood onset epilepsies. Uh, there's no evidence that the THC component, the, the other component that can be found in some cannabis oils is of any additional benefit. And it may in fact be doing harm, the THC component. There's definitely a risk of psychiatric problems, particularly in children and in young adults exposed to it. So I welcome that we can now you know, offer cannabidiol to that small group of patients who really need it where other things have failed. But I think the guidance that's come through at the moment is appropriately restrictive on the evidence that we have. Understood. Philippa Kay, what's it going to mean for you as a GP? So it's already meant actually that patients are coming and asking um, for medical cannabis for all kinds of things from chronic pain to MS um, to epilepsy and at the moment the answer is no for most of those things. The news today essentially says that I can now refer to either a neurologist for patients with epilepsy who aren't under control by anything else um, or to an oncologist for patients having severe nausea and vomiting from chemotherapy that doesn't, isn't responding to something else. And so I can refer for those cases, but from a practical point of view of coming to your GP and having medical cannabis, we still can't do that. Okay, but are you expecting more people at your door? So we're already seeing, since, this, um, uh, since these cases have been in the press, we've seen a, a big influx, even, even personally, of, of patients coming to ask for it. But essentially, we work on the evidence base. Where there is evidence, we will give a treatment. And at the moment, there is not a strong evidence base. And until more and more research is done into the effects of the THC, which is the other component of cannabis, there's two components. There's the CBD, which is still available even over the counter in your local sort of 
health shop and the THC and the THC is the, the bit that gets you high and it's about having more research into the balance of those two components versus any potential risk that still needs to be done in order for us to get the evidence base and then be able to prescribe. Uh, Bailey, I don't know if you can hear me. Hello, it's Victoria here. Bailey? Yes? Hi, yeah, Bailey. Say yeah. hello. I, I was just wondering what... Give me a what, what, what did what... you... Sorry, go on. Sorry, go, go ahead, Victoria. What, uh, what you hope, Bailey, uh, this new, stronger medicine might do for your condition? What will the magic medicine do, Bailey? Can you tell Victoria what the magic medicine will do for you? What do you want it to do? Get my shakes away. Get your shakes away. Yeah, I bet. And Rachel, how, in terms of the seizures, how, how bad can it get for Bailey? Bailey has seizures every day. They're relentless. Um, even though he's on um, 19 tablets a day, he's tried over 20 pharmaceutical drugs over the last 13 years the vagal nerve stimulator and a ketogenic diet. Um, they're relentless. It inhibits his everyday life. He's sedated um, by the drugs that he is currently taking, the pharmaceutical drugs he's taking. Mm -hmm. So we've now got to wean him down off that, which is going to cause um, psychosis and rages, um, which obviously inhibits our whole family life. Um, he's got no quality of life, which is, you know, which is why we need full extra cannabis oil for him. And the, 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 the cannabis oil that you're able to use at the moment, what difference has that made to him? It's made huge differences. I mean, three years ago, um, before he started taking it, he had hospital um, admissions every week. He had fortnightly loading doses of pharmaceutical drugs, which would leave him sedated, unable to walk. He acted like a caged animal. Um, <clears throat> now he's had, um, since those three years, no hospital stays, no induced or increased um, medications. Um, his EEG showed uh, before and after taking the oil, there was less spiking since taking the oil. So that's clinical evidence that it has worked for him. Um, and he is a lot more communicative with, with us and the family, although today he's not because he's currently coming off clonazepam. Right. Which I, is, I'm which is, sorry, go sorry, ahead. Sorry, Rachel. I'm guessing that Bailey wears that crash helmet because he falls over. Yeah, he has um, a range of different seizure types. He has tonic-clonic seizures, drop seizures, myoclonic jerks, and they, they are just relentless. They batter his body day and night. Right. Um, he turns over into his cushion at night, um, which is blocking his airways, so we have to stay with him 24 hours a day. So, you know, Bailey's dad and I take her in turns to actually care for him through the night. And we've got a 12-year-old son amongst all this, who so we've seen his brother suffer from seizures since a toddler. So he's got mental and anxiety problems as well. Wow. So it impacts a big picture. On the picture. whole family. Yeah. yeah, on the whole family. I'm still not clear, Rachel, why, why you won't be able to get this new stuff. Well, the new stuff they're referring to is Epidiolax. Um, and obviously, you know, Bailey, the, the CBD Bailey's taking now is just along the same lines as that. Bailey right, so it's, it would THC. make no difference. No, but no it except, won't. except you would get it for free, because at the moment you're paying, what, £200 a month, is it? Um, yeah, we are, um, but we feel the quality of oil that Bailey is on now is far better than Apodiolax. He's not got no side effects from that, where Apodiolax is, is shown to give him right. um, uh, side effects yeah. with, with mm -hmm. diarrhea and liver. Yeah. No worries. Um, I think he's, he's so tired. He is. He's yeah. very. The drugs Bless are not you. being no very problem. kind to him. <laughs> no, absolutely no problem. I'm, I'm going to let Bailey get some sleep, Rachel. But oh, I'm really, so really much. grateful for your time. No thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I mean, Hannah, it's, it's interesting because for many people, this is, uh, you know, as Rachel said earlier, a, a day of elation, but not necessarily for some families who desperately need some help. Yeah, I mean, as I say, I can't comment on an individual case, but, but certainly from those in my caseload who have epilepsies of a similar severity, they are the group that I would be thinking about mm. uh, offering, or if they wanted to, considering Epidiolex. And the reason why, uh, which is this pharmaceutical grade uh, form of cannabidiol, and the reason we're, that we're all recommending that rather than some of the other preparations is, firstly, we, it's properly quality controlled, it's manufactured to sort of pharmaceutical standards, so we know exactly the concentration of drug in each batch, that it's stable and so on. 
Secondly, because of the concerns about THC, um, we, there's almost no THC really in, in cannabidiol. Um, and the THC does have uh, potential side effects. Now, the epi cannabidiol does as well. I mean, it's true about one in three patients get diarrhea, uh, sedation, somnolence. But it, it's a misunderstanding to think that mm. a drug with cannabidiol and THC in it isn't also going to have those side effects. The likely difference between preparations that people are buying in health food shops and the preparations that we might prescribe is just a dose effect. It's that the dose in the pharmaceutical grade sure. is much higher. But I suppose people would weigh up the, they'd weigh up the risks and benefits, yeah. weren't they? And, and if, if, I yeah. mean, Rachel, I don't know if you can still hear me. Uh, we just need to open your microphone, but you can hear us, which is good. Um, what, in, you know, in, in one 24-hour period, what's the most seizures that Bailey might have had, for example? 250 seizures. He's recorded mm. to have um, abnormal brain activity every 2.5 seconds. Mm. Goodness now, you outweigh, that, you outweigh that with um, giving him um, just a tiny bit of THC, which, in actual fact, the CBD actually counteracts the, uh, the high in the THC when, when taken. So, you know, really, there is no comparison. I would put my son on that before giving him any of the pharmaceutical drugs that he is on now. Yeah. The side effects he's had from them are horrendous. Um, hallucinations, he's had ataxia, he's had head-to-toe rashes, um, he's had rages, he's been like a caged animal running into the road away from us. You know, the list is endless, he's suffered enough. I mean, he's been on all these drugs since the age of two and a half, and I, I'm not going to bear seeing him, you know, in pain and suffering any longer. Something needs to take action. There's a lot of children in this country. Okay, Epidiolex might be for, you know, children who haven't been on CBD oil, and it's, it's, it's a gateway for them. That's sure. fine. But with us, we need the next stage. And what about all of us families out there with suffering children who need access? to these products. I mean, there's three licenses that have been granted in the UK with with these products, with THC. You cannot possibly give it to those children and not to ours. We've seen the positive effects those children have had. They are seizure free. Um, so there's no denying that evidence is there right in front of your eyes. Okay. And you look to other countries as well who have got um, clinical evidence. And by the way, um, these products are GMP, to, um, uh, GMP um, and tested as well. And so is the oil Bailey is on now. So. Okay. The evidence is there. Thank you all. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much for talking to us on the program. Thank you. Thank you. Now, for the first time, specialist doctors in the UK can now prescribe medicinal cannabis to some patients. The change in the law came in response to a campaign on behalf of several epileptic children. But patient groups warn that many people are still likely to be denied access to the medicine because the guidelines, they say, are too restrictive. Well, joining me now is Professor David Nutt, who is a neuropsychopharmacologist and Labour's former government's drug advisor. David's also chair of drug science at Imperial College London. Also with us is Steve Moore, who's the founder of the Centre of Medicinal Cannabis and the think tank Volt Fass, which campaigned for the legalisation of cannabis oil for Billy Caldwell. Welcome to you both. Thank you very much for coming in. Steve, to you first, if I may, because you were directly involved in this yes. campaign. Just remind people at home why you feel uh, that medicinal use of cannabis is so important in some of these cases. Well, we think in, in the case of, um, of Charlotte Caldwell, she had been, she'd found it was the only treatment actually that contained the seizures for her 12-year-old son, Billy. I mean, she had to travel the world. I mean, she made three trips across the Atlantic to get treated in the US and then finally in Canada. And it was really her, her last trip to Canada in June, which basically elicited the change in the legislation. Mm. So they will feel it's been a very successful day, uh, but this is a limited way of prescribing and only applies to some patients. Give us a sense of your understanding. Yes, I mean, it's, the guidelines that were published yesterday really are very, very restrictive. I think no one can have a reasonable expectation anytime soon of getting, of, of getting medical cannabis under the regime that was set out yesterday. We are taking a fresh look at that. We think that we need to be more innovative in our policy making. We need to reach out across the globe to look at international best practice. And we'll be publishing our findings early next month in terms of how we see the program working in the UK. Uh, Professor David, I can see you, you nodding. Mm -hmm. you, you welcome this, but you feel it, it's too limited? Oh, I totally welcome it. I mean, it, for the first time in 50 years, government has told the truth about cannabis, which is it is a medicine. It actually turns out that it's much more interesting as a medicine than we ever thought when it was banned. Uh, the cannabis plant makes hundreds of chemicals, which all of which could have medical value. So yeah, I, I think it's a great day. What, what we need to do now is ensure that we 
administer it appropriately mm. to as many people who's, as who may benefit, and, and it's too restrictive at present. Because what we know about this, this set of guidelines is this can be administered by specialist doctors, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll ask you to address that in a moment, whether that's appropriate, and also to people for whom other mm -hmm. uh, treatments have not worked, so it, you have to have exhausted various mm -hmm. other avenues mm -hmm. first. That's right, and that's just, that seems to me a little bit too cautious. I mean, so for instance, there are areas of, of, of uh, health where cannabis might be a lot safer than some of the other treatments that people are being given, like immunosuppressants, for instance. So it might m make more sense to try cannabis earlier on. But at the very least, we've at least accepted the principle. And as I guess as specialists get more and more confident in, in prescribing it, uh, and, and the patient lobby groups get more and more demanding of, uh, of interventions, I think the field will grow, and I think it will grow faster than perhaps people expect. I mean, do you think we're going to get, Steve, to a point where people can go to their GP and ask for this, or is it right that it is very much a specialist avenue? Uh, perhaps in time. I'm kind of relaxed at the moment about it being made available via uh, specialist clinicians. There are up to 80,000 of those clinicians across the country. And what I'm really encouraged about is some of the condition charities' responses to yesterday's uh, announcements. The MSSI in particular have really challenged the government and challenged the clinicians because on the guidelines. Because I think they feel that some of their members, some of the people suffering yes, with MS, indeed. will not be able to get... I mean, as charities, they're ready to, in, to go on this journey of exploration and, and, and scientific discovery and share that, that sort of clinical data. And that's what we urgently need to do in the UK. I mean, if we do this pro we could do this better than almost any other country in the world because of the nature of the institutions we have yeah. in this country, you know. So I think it's a time to embrace embrace this, embrace the change, embrace the research, engage with patients, share the data and progress from here. One of the issues of course for people up until this point has been trying to access cannabis, mm. medicinal cannabis mm. in illegal ways I suppose. Do you think that will continue though while some patients feel they can't still get it through legal avenues? Well precisely, that is why we have to meet the patient demand because if we don't they will go and source it elsewhere and they may not source the best stuff. We know in the UK almost all cannabis which is sold on the streets is skunk, which is high THC. For most of the indications, that isn't the right kind of cannabis. And there are still concerns, aren't there? People talk about cannabis psychosis and there are these links perhaps with different forms of cannabis that, yeah. that worry mm. people because there have been yeah. issues with mental health and so on. Talk us through that a little but bit. I think, I, mean, I think in the context of this programme that's been initiated by the government, I mean, that's a pretty gross caricature. I think, I think there's any... I mean, the, 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 the products that are likely to be made available to patients in the UK in the coming months are not under, under the control of... Uh, clinical physicians are, are very unlikely to cause any of those problems. I mean, the, the risk profile of these products is very, very low. I think that the, uh, and I think some of the claims that have been made in recent weeks by certain uh, clinicians seem to me to be at odds with all the evidence. Uh, and, and then, Professor David Nutt, do you think it's going to only be a matter of time before this is much more widely available? Do you think there's still a resistance either in government or among the general public who are nervous of this as a substance? I don't think the public are nervous. I think politicians are nervous. I think some of the media are nervous. I think many doctors are nervous. Doctors are nervous because they don't know much about it and they don't know how to use it. Many patients are... I mean, the fact that this change in the law was instigated by parents rather than by doctors is, is rather challenging, isn't it? It's, I, I, you know, where el you kind of wonder where else did it happen? You know, the fact we had to rely on mothers taking their yes. children to foreign countries for years to get treatment which the medical profession was denying actually is pretty damaging and I think that shows the resistance so we've got to educate doctors better. Okay Steve I know you were going to talk a little bit about uh, public opinion we're out of time I'm afraid but Professor David Nutt and Steve Moore thank you very yeah. much for your time today. Thank you. Medicinal cannabis products can now be legally prescribed to some patients across the UK for the first time. A change in the law was announced after a high-profile campaign on behalf of severely epileptic children. But the treatments could only be prescribed by specialist doctors and in a limited number of circumstances. David Rhodes reports. Harry has bundles of energy, but that's not always been the case for this 10-year-old who has had epileptic fits every day that could kill him. He had every type of seizure imaginable. We spent days where he, he just lay on the sofa. He didn't go to school. Harry was dying before our very eyes. 
Epilepsy sufferers and other people with chronic conditions have made lots of noise in recent years about how cannabis-based products can help them manage their condition. At the moment, Harry's parents can legally buy non-medical low-strength cannabis oil, which they say have stopped Harry's seizures. 129 days without a seizure, 130, we'd count every single day. Yeah. Life-changing. Life changing. As Harry grows up, his parents want him to have access to stronger medicinal products, and today they hoped Harry would get his first prescription. But their local doctor says he won't qualify for help. Well, you just crushed. If you're going to make something legal and available and make the big announcement and get people's hopes up, people who are seriously ill, and then you just, it's all crushed. Practically, the announcement is at the present time meaningless. Campaign groups have welcomed today's law change but say the rules regarding this new class of medicine are still unclear. There are still huge gaps in the process and it's going to be very difficult for, 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 for patients to, to, to access cannabis on November the 1st. NHS England say a small number of patients with severe epilepsy or multiple sclerosis and those cancer patients suffering from the effects of chemotherapy could be prescribed medicinal cannabis. Doctors say though they still don't know enough about these new products. We like to prescribe where there is evidence that a particular medication or treatment will help. And right now there needs to be a lot more research into the potential risks and side effects of these treatments versus the benefits. And until we have that evidence, we won't be able to prescribe. Taking or supplying cannabis for recreational use is still illegal across the UK and the government says it has no plans to legalise cannabis use more widely. For a small number of people, today's law change is a big moment, but there will also be many families across the country left still searching for a long-term medical solution. David Rhodes, BBC News, North Yorkshire. After half past two, we'll be joined by a mother who's been campaigning for a change in the law on medicinal cannabis. Medicinal cannabis products can now be legally prescribed to, to some patients across the UK for the first time. A change in the law was announced after a high-profile campaign on behalf of severely epileptic children. But the treatments can only be prescribed by specialist doctors and in a limited number of circumstances. David Rhodes reports. Harry has bundles of energy, but that's not always been the case for this 10-year-old who has had epileptic fits every day that could kill him. He has every type of seizure imaginable. We spent days where he, he just lay on the sofa. He didn't go to school. Harry was dying before our very eyes. Epilepsy sufferers and other people with chronic conditions have made lots of noise in recent years about how cannabis-based products can help them manage their condition. At the moment, Harry's parents can legally buy non-medical low-strength cannabis oil, which they say have stopped Harry's seizures. 129 days without a seizure, 130, we'd count every single day. Yeah. Life-changing. Life changing. As Harry grows up, his parents want him to have access to stronger medicinal products, and today they hoped Harry would get his first prescription. But their local doctor says he won't qualify for help. Well, you're just crushed. If you're going to make something legal and available and make the big announcement and get people's hopes up, people who are seriously ill, and then you just, it's all crushed. Practically, the announcement is at the present time meaningless. Campaign groups have welcomed today's law change but say the rules regarding this new class of medicine are still unclear. There are still huge gaps in the process and it's going to be very difficult for, 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 for patients to, to, to access cannabis on November the 1st. NHS England say a small number of patients with severe epilepsy or multiple sclerosis and those cancer patients suffering from the effects of chemotherapy could be prescribed medicinal cannabis. Doctors say though they still don't know enough about these new products. We like to prescribe where there is evidence that a particular medication or treatment will help. And right now there needs to be a lot more research into the potential risks and side effects of these treatments versus the benefits. And until we have that evidence, we won't be able to prescribe. Taking or supplying cannabis for recreational use is still illegal across the UK and the government says it has no plans to legalise cannabis use more widely. For a small number of people, today's law change is a big moment, but there will also be many families across the country left still searching for a long-term medical solution. David Rhodes, BBC News, North Yorkshire.
Let's speak now to Baroness Meacher, who chairs the all-party parliamentary group on drug policy reform. Baroness Meacher, welcome. Thank you very much. We've had a bit of a wait and we're grateful for you for staying with us. Just explain from the people you've spoken to how important this change in the rules is. It is unbelievably important. Uh, and I do say thank you to the Home Secretary. After 47 years, when a medicine has been ruled out of court, it's wonderful to have today. But there are about a million people, patients, with many different conditions who know that cannabis is helpful for them because they've taken it illegally rather than not have it. So there are all those people out there and they're going to be thinking, oh great, maybe I can get cannabis now uh, legally. And of course, tiny numbers will get it because doctors don't understand uh, that, that cannabis really can help their patients. One of the problems is that a lot of the research into cannabis has been on skunk. Illegal skunk, very high in THC, and I would agree, dangerous. That is not medical cannabis. So the research is misleading doctors who think, oh, dear, 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 this is not good. But good cannabis is incredibly helpful for an awful lot of people. And, and how damaging is a delay in getting access to these uh, medicinal cannabis products, particularly for children? Mm. The, 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 mo the biggest tragedy about delay is actually the children with um, treatment-resistant epilepsies because the, the, the may be epidiolex, which is to some extent helpful for a tiny number of those children. Explain. Uh, that there's, a, there's a new drug, a can CBD-based drug, uh, that will come, become available, but it's only any use for a tiny number of children, even of a tiny proportion of the children with um, treatment-resistant epilepsies, all the other children will go on having seizures day by day, like little Alfie Dingley, 3,000 seizures a year. What has that been doing to his brain? He's now on cannabis medicine. He is completely seizure-free. And these other children with treatment-resistant epilepsies could, many of them, I'm, I'm not saying all of them, could be t completely uh, seizure-free. But every seizure damages the brain. But how likely is it then that, though, that the availability of these products will be wider eventually when doctors understand how to prescribe and when? Oh, I have no doubt, as in other countries. Other countries have started very narrow. Other countries have learnt. And then it will become available, I'm sure, uh, to all epileptic uh, children, treatment of certain children, but the danger is that the government will want to use this epidiolex because it's gone through all the trials, started about 10 years ago, but it's not, there are, there are much, much better cannabis medicines available today and those need to be available to these children, desperately. Really, really important. You that. mentioned a few moments ago skunk, <coughs> which is, is, is mm. a recreational drug. Yeah. Uh, how, what would you say though, by way of reassurance to people who think that by mm. allowing the <clears throat> prescription of medicinal cannabis mm. products, it is just the beginning of an end to um, the, the, yeah. the illegality mm. of recreational use drugs. Skunk will remain, <coughs> will remain illegal and it will, in my view, always be illegal, even if ca certain cannabis products became uh, legal for recreational use. Skunk is dangerous. That will never be legalized, in my view, in this country. So we don't even have to think about that. The worry about skunk, it is dangerous, yes. And so much of the research into cannabis has been based on skunk, because that's all that people, researchers, could get hold of. So the research then says, oh, cannabis dangerous. No, skunk is dangerous. Medical cannabis, if it's, if it's the right balance for, for the person concerned, is not dangerous. It's much, much, much less dangerous than morphine, much less. And yet that's available every day. Baroness Meacher, thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you very much. To Keely Donovan in Leeds. And we've been talking today, Keely, about the change in the law that permits the prescription of medicinal cannabis products. How has that change affected people in your region? Uh, well, on the face of it, today's news is a success, of course, for campaigners. Doctors, as you say, can now legally prescribe medical cannabis in the form of either oil or capsules. However, we've spoken to one family, the parents of 10-year-old Harry from North Yorkshire, who are still unhappy. 
Now, Harry has a rare form of epilepsy which can cause seizures every hour, but after taking non-medical cannabis oil earlier this year, he hasn't had a seizure since June. Now, despite today's law change, Harry's parents say their still, son still won't get a prescription for medicinal cannabis because of lack of guidance given to doctors. I actually could feel my body just literally crushing inside, you know. And angry, angry as well. I mean, how on earth can you make this announcement? How can you give people that hope? I mean, it's, it's, it's almost, you know, it's like giving a child a sweet or something. Say, yes, it's here. It's just so gorgeous. And you want this. I'm just going to revolute. You know, it's going to change your life forever. But you can't have it. So what have doctors said? Well, today marks a law change by the government. So, yes, medicinal cannabis is now legal. And whilst the NHS has offered some guidelines, they've said only a small number of patients are going to be eligible for this new type of medicine. Now, many doctors don't feel confident enough yet to prescribe medicinal-based cannabis. Nothing is going to dramatically change immediately. Um, the reality is that the guidance will make it no longer illegal for us to prescribe um, cannabis-based products, but it doesn't actually provide us with any cannabis-based products that we can prescribe at the moment, so I don't think anything's going to change immediately. So doctors say that NICE guidelines outlining the oil-based medical cannabis should be, how it should be prescribed, probably won't be published until this time next year. Keely, thank you very much. Keely Donovan in Leeds and Janine Jansen in Plymouth. Good to hear from both of you today. Thank you for taking us nationwide. Now, for the first time, doctors can legally prescribe some patients with medicinal cannabis in the UK, though restrictions remain tight. It can only be prescribed by a specialist doctor and in a limited number of circumstances where other medicines have failed. The decision to relax the rules followed an outcry over two boys with severe epilepsy who were denied access to cannabis oil, as our health editor Hugh Pym explains. Harry, who's 10 years old, has epilepsy. He's energetic enough now, but his sometimes daily fits were so severe that his parents feared for his life. He had every type of seizure imaginable. We spent days where he, he just lay on the sofa. He didn't go to school. Harry was dying before our very eyes. But after taking cannabis oil available in some shops, the fits became a lot less frequent and there was a big improvement in his condition. From today, more effective medicinal cannabis can be prescribed on the NHS, though only to certain groups of patients. Children with rare severe forms of epilepsy, adults vomiting because of chemotherapy, and some adults with multiple sclerosis. Only a small number of specialists rather than GPs will be able to prescribe medicinal cannabis, and there's continuing research into the long-term risks. I think one of the key step changes is going Some to experts think it's best to wait for the research to be completed before extending the range of patients who can be treated. It's really important that doctors don't cause any harm to their patients and don't cause side effects. And we know that cannabis-related products um, do have potential side effects, and that's why it's right that there's this, a gradual and slow incremental process going forwards now. She was happy, such a happy little girl. Emma's nine-year-old daughter, Tegan, has been in hospital for several weeks because of repeated epileptic seizures. We haven't had a hug off her for over three weeks now. She's just not... her personality is just going. She was told Tegan would qualify for the most effective medicinal cannabis, but then when the guidelines came out late yesterday, doctors said it wasn't possible. I'm absolutely gutted, absolutely gutted, knowing there's a product that can help and watching my daughter suffer every day, it's just, it's horrible, it's really horrible. Harry doesn't qualify either, and his family, like Tegan's, feel a battle to legalise medicinal cannabis has been won, but the reality hasn't matched up, with the possible benefits still not accessible. Hugh Pym, BBC News.